Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome to my booth. I'm Jay, if we haven't met yet. Somebody had a great question, Reaper versus Adobe Audition. Those are the two softwares that I use here in my studio to record everything that I do. And they were curious specifically about when I choose to use one over the other and why. I'll talk about that in a second. Before we dive in, if you like this stuff and you find it helpful, if you're willing to take a couple seconds and click the buttons down there, it helps other folks find us. And if you want to go a step further, support me, this channel, these efforts directly, you can either buy me a coffee or use the YouTube Super Thanks feature down there. Neither of those is necessary, but both are very much appreciated. And to those of you who have been so generous so far, hey, thank you. Let's talk software. So if you're watching this wondering which one is the best software, Adobe Audition or Reaper, rest easy. Both have all of the tools, all the flexibility, all the customizability built into them that you'll need to set your workflow up and tackle really any job that comes across your desk, pretty much across the board. So don't worry about it in that regard. With that said, each of them have certain strengths that I'll try to focus on in this video. Starting off with how each of these softwares treat audio. Adobe Audition is what's called a destructive software. It's not nearly as violent or ominous as it sounds. What it simply means is, after I've recorded the initial audio, any changes I make from there on out, as soon as I save that file, it's baked in, there's no going back. So if I say record over this, and then I delete this section, I need to change the gain here, uh, and then I'm gonna apply some effects over here, great. We'll apply those to the whole file. All of these steps, as soon as I click save, are baked in, can't go back, which is why in Adobe Audition, it's very, very important that you save iterations, save versions of your work as you go. I always save a raw file right after I'm done recording. I save the session as a raw. Then I go in and do a rough cut. I'll edit everything together, make sure that it's all comped and stuff like that in the way that I would like it. And then I'll do a third version where I do all of my post-processing, the equalization, the loudness, formatting, etc. And the reason why those iterations are so important is if I make a mistake, I have to be able to go back. If a client comes back to me with feedback, says, we loved it, we would like you to change this little section though, I gotta be able to go back. That just is a lot of extra steps in Adobe Audition that I don't have to make in Reaper. And that's probably the main decision point when I will decide when to use one or the other. Reaper is non-destructive. So as I record something here, blah, 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 this audio is saved as a high quality WAV file in the project documents. So if I open up my project file for this session here, here we see I've got the project file itself. Each of these are backups. So I've set it up to save versions of this session as I go every five minutes or so. And then in here, every time I press record and stop, a WAV file gets dumped in here and saved. So if I make a mistake, if I say come in here and edit this, tweak that around, uh, let's actually plop it in the middle, drag those over, and then I want to apply effects, I want to render it out. I don't have to worry about saving versions because any changes that I make, I can always go back to the original file. It even saves little carrots here so you can see where the original file stops and starts. Uh, which is just a really great feature as well. So that's the biggest difference for me between the two. If I'm gonna need to go back to it, if I'm gonna need to make changes, if it's a longer file, if I'm gonna have to do a bunch of different iterations, Reaper is the go-to. If on the other hand, I want really specific, tight edits that I'm not gonna have to go back to frequently and the client needs really, really clean audio, I'll just be sure that I'm saving my backups as I go and Adobe Audition can help me get those really specific cuts. To talk a bit more about that, here is why. This window, simply this window, it's a beautiful visual representation of what your audio will sound like. Up at the top here, it's a simple waveform view, same as every other recording software, left to right. As I record, it's time. Audio spools out on the x-axis as we go. And then on the y-axis, is amplitude. The taller something is, the louder it is. The closer to a straight line, the quieter it is. Now, 
Adobe Audition's strength in editing really specifically is this bottom view. This is a spectral view. For those of you who know what a spectral view is, feel free to scrub ahead. For those of you who don't, let me break it down for you. So x-axis, same as the top, is time. As I record, it spools out left to right. However, on the y-axis going from bottom to top is sound frequency. Lower frequency sounds are at the bottom, higher frequency sounds are at the top. You can sort of think of it as a piano keyboard flipped on its side. Lower keys are on the bottom, higher keys are on the top. And then loudness is denoted by brightness. The brighter something is, the louder it is. The darker something is, the quieter it is. All of this just makes editing really visually simple and fast. As an example, if a client comes to me and says, hey Jay, can you take the breaths out of this audio? In a waveform view, sure, I can see that that's a breath. I can also listen through and say, oh, that was a breath. Here we go, silence. However, that little mound is not as visually present as this honking guy right here. So I can go in, I know exactly in the spectral view, whoa, the breath starts here, it ends here, silence, breath, gone, lickety split. I don't have to listen to it. I know what I've done. I would recommend listening to it on your first few times just to make sure that you're doing it right. Additionally, Adobe Audition makes audio repair really simple. The spectral view, if you're like me, mouth clicks were the thing that I freaked out out about when I was starting off. I couldn't stand them, I didn't know how to deal with them, and it just drove me nuts. However, this spectral view makes tracking them down and repairing them really easy, particularly if you're not using a uh, mouth declicker like Isotope's mouth declicker. Where are we here? Adobe Audition also has its own uh, built-in automatic click remover. Both of these will work the same, but occasionally a really bad click will make its way through both of those and into the audio. With Adobe Audition, repairing it is super easy. I can zoom in, track one down. Aha! Looks like there's one right there. Instead of worrying about how I'm going to process it, Adobe Audition has this spot healing brush tool. I can either click on that in the toolbar up here or use the hotkey B. Brings up this little cursor. I just drag it over this click. Da, 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 da. Boom. And it erases it. It repairs that bit of audio and it's like the click was never there. Reaper doesn't have that sort of granular functionality, but that's not what I'm using it for. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I would use Adobe Audition over Reaper. The last thing that I'll say, it sort of builds into what I was talking about er earlier, where Adobe Audition requires sort of a step-by-step -step iteration. I think Adobe Audition, that gives it both a plus and a minus. Having to do everything manually, step-by-step, -step, or program in sort of presets that you build out, it means that you're building bespoke audio. You're tailoring every choice that you make specifically for that moment, that audition, that sound. In that sense, having to go through everything step-by-step -step in Adobe Audition makes everything really specific and you're having to make every choice as you go. Reaper, on the other hand, is just a much more fluid workflow instead of a sort of step-by-step -step process. It takes care of a lot of things on its own, provided you know what you're doing, which can be great in saving you time and being able to do iterations. So if I need to export multiple files, if a client gives me feedback, I need to re-export something, if I need to change some of my processing on certain aspects, all of that's really easy to go back and redo. Adobe Audition, not so much. Uh, so those are the big differences into when I would choose to use Adobe Audition over Reaper in terms of workflow. If you're just starting out, there are a couple of reasons why I would probably suggest using Reaper over Adobe Audition. And the biggest one of those is most simply the price. Reaper is 65 bucks for a lifetime license until you make over $20,000 a year using Reaper, at which point it costs, get ready for it, $225 for a lifetime license. 
Adobe Audition, by contrast, at its cheapest as of the making of this video, is about 30 bucks a month. That means a year subscription to Adobe Audition, you've already overpaid what you would have paid for Reaper by about 100 bucks or so. Uh, and then if you buy Adobe's whole suite of plugins, then it's 60 bucks a month, which, you know, it for what you get is definitely worth it. But uh, if you're on a budget, Reaper is definitely swinging for the fences. The last thing that I'll say is Adobe Audition does offer a lot more integration directly with some other features, particularly with the wider Adobe ecosystem. So if you're using Premiere Pro, if you're exporting things to certain files and all that, Adobe Audition is sort of built into that system. So I might use it for those scenarios as well. Anyway, I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any other questions about this, anything else voiceover related, hit me up below or you're free to email me on my website where I've also got coaching if that's your speed. Until the next one of these, be well and I'll see you then. Toodles. Toodles.